Welcome to Build Builds, and today we're going to be going over 10 tools that any hobbyist woodworker should have. The 10 tools I'll be going over today are really just my recommendation for what a hobbyist uh, should have in their, in their shop. I consider myself a hobbyist. Uh, I have splurged on, on tools here and there, but for the most part, uh, these tools will be pretty basic, and I recommend these tools uh, since I've been using them basically every single day since I've started. So the first tool is actually very simple. Uh, we're going to go over the drill. I recommend getting a regular drill. Battery powered is fine. Uh, keyless, hopefully. I don't think they make a key chuck anymore. Uh, but this is a Makita drill. It's been, this is my first, actually, this might be the first tool I ever bought. Good set of bits. It's also very useful. We have a sorted here. I've collected these over the, over the last couple of years that I've been woodworking. Uh, but also an impact driver. So an impact driver uh, could be useful. This is more really of an, of an optional tool, I guess, but uh, they kind of go hand in hand. Uh, an impact driver is really useful because not only does it uh, screw things in, it also uh, hammers it in the direction of its, uh, in its turning to actually force the screw in harder. Uh, it's really useful when you're framing. It's even more useful for when you're trying to get really big screws into really hard wood. Uh, it's a great tool to have and uh, again, it's optional, but if you really want to move really quickly through your projects, especially if you're screwing in a lot, an impact driver is really good. A good thing about an impact driver is it's generally small. This one's made by Craftsman. It was cheap. Uh, it's not too bad. I think I picked it up at one of the big box stores over here, but it's a great tool. The bits come in and out really quickly. I just gotta make sure that when you get the bits for it, they are impact driver bits because some of them will break as you turn them. So you just gotta be careful make sure that it's uh, hardened. Drill. Impact driver and a good assortment of bits. You probably find a good uh, assortment pack or something at one of the big box stores. They're relatively cheap, uh, but yeah, drill and impact driver. So this is a fairly common tool that you see a lot of people have. It's a jigsaw. This one particular, this particular one is a Ryobi battery powered jigsaw. Uh, the good thing about this, the battery powered ones, is that when you're typically when you're using a jigsaw, you're making the complex curved cuts. Uh, so a, a jigsaw is a really good tool to have in your hobbyist shop because it allows you to make really nice long sweeping cuts or even like tight turns to cut out notches or whatever. It's a really good tool. You, this, this one particularly has uh, different speeds. It also ha can cut metal and stuff like that, but this one was really cheap. It's Ryobi. Uh, they're not really known for making quality tools here in the States, but they aren't too bad. Uh, this particular thing with was on sale at one of the big box stores. It was... Uh, it came with the battery and the jigsaw. I think it had to be under a hundred bucks uh, and the charger. I got lucky. I think I just happened to find it on sale, but I highly recommend this tool. This next tool is something that could seriously save you time in your hobbyist shop. Such if you only have like a couple hours to do this uh, a week or, or a day or, or however you split your time up, but an orbital sander, or this, was, this is a random orbital sander, is a great tool to have to really speed up the process of woodworking, especially at the finishing stage, right? Because you're really trying to get rid of the material and make it look nice and smooth. An orbital sander is great. If you don't know what an orbital sander is, basically this is a random orbital sander. It, it plugs in, this one's made of Akita. It spins this disc here, uh, allowing you to really get in and sand something and really take or hog away material really quickly, actually. Uh, it's an awesome tool to have, uh, very cheap too, especially the ones with the cords. The cordless ones get pretty expensive, but the ones with the cords, I think this was like 40 bucks. Uh, made on Makita as well, I love my Makita tools. You can also pick up a set of sanding discs for it that are also really cheap. This was off Amazon, I think. This box had to have been 10 bucks, and it's an assortment of just rent of uh, grit of grit sizes, right? So it's like uh, I think it goes from 60 to 300 or 240. Yeah, 60 to 340. Uh, 240. It's great to have, and I haven't run through this box. I've had it for like three years. Uh, there's a, it's a standard size, which is great. I think this is four inch. I can't see four inch or whatever it is. Uh, they come in sizes. You can just check what the make on yours is. But yeah, you just buy the the sanding patches, or the sanding discs, slap them on there, put a hose in the end, and you're good to go. And it sands really well. This next tool is something that uh, every woodworker should have, hobbyist or not, or any aspiring carpenter. Uh, these are squares. Squares are great. Uh, squares can help you make straight lines that are 
exactly perpendicular to a uh, face. So you can use this and just mark it down. Like you've seen me do this in videos before. This here is called a combination square. It has a 45 degree angle on it as well. So you can make 45s on pieces. It has a 90 as well. And it has both uh, millimeters and inches on it. I mainly use, actually I've used both, but uh, they're great. The cool thing about it is this one has, this one's adjustable. So you can say you want to make this one exactly the height of this, put it in, we'll tighten it down. And now you can make a mark somewhere along the board or you might make a rabbit or something. Uh, this is a great tool for that. This is a carpenter square and a carpenter square or known as a, I guess it's a framing square too, but it's really quick. It's also called a speed square. So you put it on the board. You've see, definitely seen me that seen me use this in one of the videos. Uh, you do that, you put it down, mark, and you can take it off. It also has a 45, but it's not adjustable like that one is. Uh, this is just a square. Uh, this is not a particularly great square, but it's one of my first ones I bought. It's good for checking if things are square. Uh, that's really all it's good for, and it has like measure. It has measurements on it, but I wouldn't use these. Uh, I just use a tape measure. Uh, but it's great for getting to checking to see if things are inside corners are square or outside corners are square. Uh, that's really what it's for. Uh, this is what's called a drywall T square. Uh, this is great because it's really long. It's 48 inches long. Uh, the cool thing about it is it's really good for cutting up sheet goods like plywood or what this is really useful is for is drywall. You put it on the edge, it has two flanges and you kind of just sit it on the edge of the board kind of like this, if my hose is in the way. Do like that and you can mark along a really long stretch, uh, a straight edge that's exactly perpendicular to the edge of your board. Uh, now these are all squares. There are many other squares you can buy. These are the ones I recommend for hobbyists. I've used these constantly. In fact, I would even recommend getting a bigger one of these or even a smaller one. Uh, both sizes would be appropriate because there have been times where this doesn't fit. But any square is good uh, and buy whichever one you can afford. I don't do much uh, hand filing and, and hand uh, woodworking or anything like that or any hand chiseling, but uh, when I do need it, I do recommend having uh, at least these four sets of tools here. I have a very simple bench plane, not bench plane, uh, block plane, sorry. Good hobbyist plane, it's nice and flat. You've seen me use it before. And this is a very cheap set of chisels. This is a half inch chisel, a three quarters inch chisel, and an inch chisel. Like I said, I don't do much uh, hand woodworking or anything, anything intricate, but this gets the job done when I need to clean out a rabbit. Uh, which actually you can see me do. You can actually see me use both of these tools in uh, the the oak crate video. Uh, I can link that down below. These are good tools to have. So this next tool here is uh, so this next tool here is something that I've used very frequently, and it's I would say this is pivotal to having uh, a, a hobbyist wood shop because this can get cabinets together really quickly to make really quick boxes. These are two types of pocket hole jigs here, both made by Craig. In fact, you've seen me use this one uh, very frequently in a lot of my first three videos I released. Um, this is the cheapest of the two options here. Um, it comes with this drill bit, which adjusts via this collar to just depth of your, your hole. Uh, you can see that the drill bit has a step here to make a pocket for the screw. And the special screws have like a like a really thick head that go in there. And this screws in here like this. You can adjust the collar so you can adjust how, de how deep the hole is in your wood. Clamp it and then you just put, you just start drilling and it goes right in and it makes a nice hole. This one here has a built-in clamp. I haven't used this one on vi in the video yet, but this is coming up soon. Uh, this one has an adjustable stop and you can adjust the height and the clamping pressure and it comes with storage. And if you're a hobbyist, I wouldn't buy this, but if you see you find yourself using a lot of pocket holes, this would save you so much time because just of the clamping alone. Uh, when you have to manually clamp this over and over again in the vise or however, they make a special clamp for it. Uh, it takes a really long time to do. Pocket hole jig, great tool to have as a hobbyist woodworker. Another very critical tool for the hobbyist woodworker is clamps. And here I have a bunch of the types I have. I have other types, but this is the main types that I've used very frequently. In fact, you might have seen me use some of them. Uh, some of them are more useful than others, uh, but the basic types of clamps I have are C-clamps, 
which are just metal usually, and they just come with a twisty bit that clamps. Easy. The next is an F-style clamp, which you can see makes an F, and they come in varying lengths. Another really good investment is bar clamps. You buy the pipe, so you can make it as long or as short as you want it. Uh, I think this is about 36 inches. I have two 48 inches over there. Uh, screws right into the end. I think this is a half inch pipe. They also can, you, they also come bigger. Uh, the reason why you'd want a bunch of these is because when you're gluing up panels, what you want is a flat edge for the clamp to rest on. And then what you do is you open it up like this and let it sit on the table and then you can clamp it all together when you make a panel. There's also these one-handed Irwin clamps, which you can see here are uh, useful, very useful because they're one-handed, but they're really expensive. I'm talking like really expensive. So I wouldn't buy these as your first clamp. I made that mistake. Uh, these other F-style clamps are very cheap. So I would go with those instead. There's another quick grip clamp here, also made by Irwin. It's a long reach clamp. As you can see, it's like a weird C style type. Uh, useful, used very rarely in my shop. Uh, we also have these. These are 99 cents, I think, from the big box. So these things are great. Uh, these are spring clamps. You can see, they're one, you can use them one-handed. They're very useful for quickly putting things together. Uh, I would recommend getting a ton of these every time you go, because they're 99 cents, they're very cheap, and buy five at a time. This is what's called a corner clamp. It has two spinning uh, screws, and they push these red pieces in and they clamp the boards at a, 90, at a perfect 90 degree angle to each other. You've seen me use this in the uh, crate video. And the last clamp I have is a band clamp. What it's really useful for is you can glue round things together or each one of these corner pieces attached to a corner of a box and then you just lock the rope in and you tighten this and it pulls the rope taut, putting even pressure on each corner so you get a nice square box at the very end and all the joints are are nice and tight. I highly recommend uh, at least most of these clamps. So this is one of those uh, I would say must-have tools and others can argue with me and feel free to mention it down below. Its specialty is straight cuts. You can use one of those squares if you want to line up a line. You can clamp a board to both ends and run it along the straight edge. Just a very versatile tool and it's also very cheap. I think this Makita one was 80 bucks and it's corded. You can buy cordless ones, but again, the batteries and the whole thing costs a ton of money. It's not worth it. The only thing you have to worry about with a circle saw is that it's much more dangerous than a jigsaw. Uh, the blade spins very fast, and uh, it's terrifying to use if you haven't used one before. But with enough skill and practice, I'm sure you'll, you'll be fine. But a circle saw is a must-have if you're looking to make straight cuts fairly quickly and repeatable. This is a tool that I would, that many of you would probably argue is not does not belong in a woodworking shop. And I would say you're probably correct. Uh, the better vise would be a moxin vise since it's wood and be much wider and you could do much more with a moxin vise, but I have yet to make one. For those who don't know, a moxin vise is a really long vise. It's usually on your bench and uh, it's generally made of wood or hardwood rather, and uh, it's softer and better on your material. This is a machinist's vise and it is something I use every single time I'm woodworking, and it's mainly because I don't have another vise, but also for making pocket holes, it's really useful for clamping it in the, in the bench and screwing in the pocket hole. Uh, I do have soft jaws for it, and this one was rather cheap. This had to have been less than $100, and I do recommend it. Uh, and if you are going to be woodworking with it, I recommend making soft jaws as well, which is just two pieces of pine. Easy to make. This tool, I would argue, is borderline hobbyist, intermediate, uh, only because of its expense and the experience it can require to use properly. If you can afford it, it probably runs you about $100 to $200, depending on the brand you get. I have a DeWalt one. It came with this uh, plunge base as well. Uh, but the bits I bought, as you can see here, we have a chamfer bit, we have a straight bit, uh, and we have a... Um, flush cut bit, flush trim bit. Uh, the I have way more in the cabinet back there, which you've seen in the last video, which would be the again the crate video. I made this uh, router table. It's basically just an inset piece of MDF in my bench, and this kind of just comes in here and just clips in. I have this this fence that clips in as well. 
uh, and it moves in these T-tracks. Um, I would consider myself a hobbyist, and I use this all the time, and if you can afford it, it is a really good tool to have in the arsenal. But as a hobbyist, probably gonna need, I would say, if, you're, if you are looking to buy a router, get one flush trim bit, and make sure it is a half inch shank. A quarter inch shank uh, gets a little wobbly and you end up with some chatter. Uh, this supports both. It comes with a collet for both. Uh, flush trim bits, I would say get one of those. Get a straight bit. Uh, get a, and a round over bit. I think that should cover really everything that, that you need. And then it's a good tool. I, I recommend if you can afford it, get it. Well, there you have it. There's 10 hobbyist tools that I recommend. Uh, some of them, right, the price range does vary. Uh, it doesn't get too expensive, which is good. Uh, the most expensive tool I would say was the router. And the least expensive is probably the squares if you count them. In terms of tools, that's, I'd say all of these are in a good range, for, especially for a hobbyist woodworker who's looking to get into it uh, pretty seriously. Thank you guys so much for watching and I do appreciate it. And if you suggest any other tools, please leave it down in the description, but uh, down in the comments below. Uh, I'll be sure to link as many of these as I can, as I can find down in the description. And uh, feel free to let me know what you thought of the video down below. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Bill Builds.